Schools in public life cannot afford to have thin skins. Criticism, comments, attacks are par for the course. But right now, there is a virus of intolerance infecting our political class. No matter which government or which state, cases against those who offend the sensibilities of powerful politicians abound. I'm going to highlight three incidents from just today. In Tamil Nadu, BJP leader S. Selva Kumar was arrested for a series of tweets attacking Santhal Balaji, who is a minister in the DMK-led government in the state. The tweets refer to the leader as Ganja and accused him of corruption. In Assam, an Ahmadmi party leader has been arrested for a social media post criticizing the Himanta government's mega Bihu celebration, saying they are doing business in the name of Bihu. On the other hand, a Sessions court has given a rapper in Maharashtra temporary reprieve. This rapper was booked for a viral song that targeted corrupt politicians. Though the song didn't name any person or parties, a local neta filed a complaint saying that the BJP Shinde government was being defamed. There are several other cases all across the country. We now live in a time when a tweet, a comment or even a song can land you in jail. And it's not necessary that you're a political functionary and that's why, you know, you're being targeted. You could be a common citizen airing your view. The question here is, are laws protecting against defamation and disruption of public order being used as tools to silence critics? Isn't it time our political and public representatives develop thicker skins. To speak on this, I'm joined first now by Raj Mungase, who is a rapper. He's actually one of two rappers who has been booked in Maharashtra recently, and Raj Mungase is the one who has got reprieve from a local court. Mr. Mungase, can you hear me? All right. We'll try and connect with Raj Mungase, the rapper who was actually booked for a viral song that he put out. And while we try and get that connection together, let me just uh, get you to the rest of our panel. Arti Sate, spokesperson of the BJP on the show today. I'm speaking with uh, Dr. Pentapati Pularao, political analyst, and Karuna Nandi, advocate in the Supreme Court. Welcome to all of you, and thank you so much for speaking with us. Arti Sate, let me begin with you, since we're taking up the Maharashtra story as well. Someone booked for a rap. You know, this is this is the city that has made Gully Boy famous. Why such a thin skin? Arti Sate, let me come to you first. All right, I'm told I don't have Arti Sate either. Let me go to Karuna Nandi. Karuna, can you hear me? Yes, Mr. Navdar, tell me. All right. So, Karuna Nandi, you know, this spate and sort of virus, I would say, of really thin skins that we're seeing across state and party lines, honestly, what does a common citizen do at a time like this? What's going on is essentially lawfare. Law is being weaponized across the board, including sometimes by government, um, but certainly to wield a particular type of power in order to silence people, in order to interfere with the democratic process, in order to remove people from positions that they, you know, often legitimately hold, um, whether they're intellectual positions or other positions. Uh, what is a common citizen to do? I think to voice their concerns about the laws themselves, that these laws that we have inherited from the British that have become further weaponized need to go. The defamation, criminal defamation law, needs to go. That it's clear that it can be weaponized against BJP people, BJP officials, as well as any other uh, officials. For example, this person who has been detained for many reasons, but including the fact that he called somebody who does not have hair, ganja, and the defense is truth. And truth is a perfectly legitimate defense to take. Um, in uh, you know, in it's a it's a legitimate and complete defense if it's said in the public interest and if the person is a public functionary. Um, there's no reason that it shouldn't be said, right? It's not such a bad thing. 
Um, the trouble with defamation law, for example, the criminal defamation, is that you can take the defensive truth only at the stage of trial when it comes to the turn of the accused to put forward their defense, right? So just all in all, the law is bad, the law must go. And if only there would be an overhaul of the criminal law in order to rationalize the laws that throttle democracy. And But, you know, I don't see much hope of that happening under the present regimes. No, but uh, Karuna Nandi, is it the present regime? Because we are giving you examples, and you know we've seen three examples today. One is from the state of Tamil Nadu. One is from the state of Assam, Maharashtra. But we've put together these examples over the last few months, and it's pretty much every state. There is absolutely no. Well, there I said is no present state regime, which seems immune. I said present regimes, Mr. In, uh, in Amdar, if you sort of rewind. However. I will also say this, since you have brought it up, I will also say this, that there is no question but the fact that the center of the union government, this union government, and the BJP governments has made the PMLA a law in which it's impossible, you know, it's pretty much impossible to get bail if the ED says that you have done something in terms of, uh, if the complaint is framed in a particular way. Um, it's made the, it's tightened the UAPA. It's made the sort of, as I said, the weaponization of legality in, against democratic speech or free speech and not just speech, but um, other democratic actions. It's, it's just tightened, it's just tightened these laws in ways that don't serve them. So there is also that. However, let us be clear that the Congress and other governments, other state governments, you know, the DMK, other governments, have also misused these laws. It's just that the BJP does it more and does it, you know, more efficiently, perhaps. Sate, you want to respond to that? You want to respond to that? about why we are seeing more and more such cases. I mean, look at the case of this rapper. You know, and we're trying to get a stable video line or at least get him on the phone line on, uh, on, on the show and see his side of the story. Someone writes a song, makes a video and puts it online. It gets lakhs and lakhs of views. Why such a thin skin? Shall I, shall a I respond or...? Yes, Aarti Sathe. That question's for you, Aarti Sathe. Well, it's surprising that this question has been put to me because I don't think there has been a study of the various thin skins that have been um, earlier, you know, really uh, been, been shown as far as the earlier governments are concerned. But I'm not going to get into that political slugfest of saying which government did what. If, but if I had to read a list of various uh, tweets or various situations which had happened when the Mahavika Sagadi government was there in Maharashtra. In fact, uh, that actress, that Maharashtra actress who had actually said something or she had only tweeted something about a, a poem which was actually written by somebody else and it was alleged that it was against Honorable Sharad Pawarji. She was put behind bars. There are various, various, various instances where, uh, you know, comments were made against the then Chief Minister uh, Uddhav Thakre and those people also, their voices had been silenced or their action had been taken. I think the most important point which one would really have to see here is not which government has done that or, you know, to cast an aspersion that BJP does it more effectively. I think that's incorrect. It's not about whether the BJP does it effectively or Congress does it more effectively. The emergency has been the darkest period in our democracy and we've had an evolved uh, no, no, Ms. Ms. Sathya, I'm, I'm afraid I must right? stop you there no. because you've no, no, gone you into emergency. No, no, else. you've you gone into emergency. Ma'am, I've spoken else. to you and asked you a question you about what has happened today. No, but why not? You have spoken you uninterrupted for a minute and a half. Now you've gone into 1975. You're not going to let me complete. I am not going to stop just because you're asking me to stop. I am making my point and I will stop once I have finished point I'm trying to make is, is that no government is trying to silence something. Freedom of speech, freedom of expression comes with fetters. Our constitution has given us article 
Article 19, given us Article 22, every freedom comes with responsibilities. Our constitution has inbuilt mechanism. And if somebody writes something, if somebody says something, in fact, no government agency has taken any action against this, uh, you know, this rapper. It is a Yuva Sena leader who has taken or has filed an FIR or she has taken cognizance of that. No government agency has taken any cognizance I'm, of it. I'm so afraid. it's not a question that I'm, the government you, is trying to do. So sure. really speaking, yeah. that our government is doing something wrong or is trying to throttle democracy, please, I think this narrative needs to be stopped here and now. Miss you know, unfortunately, you have just further. proven my point. You have just proven my point because this is a discussion. This is a discussion. No, no, you can make it assertively, of course. This is a discussion. This is a discussion. This is a debate. This is a discussion. This is a debate. I have asked you a question about what is happening today. You have rightly pointed out that all state governments are doing it. The information on my screen is rightly pointing out that all state governments are doing doing it. Do not single out the BJP government. All that I'm saying is today the action has been taken by somebody else has filed an FIR. The government agencies have not done anything. All that I'm saying is that a freedom of speech and expression comes with responsibilities. But to squarely put the blame and saying BJP is doing it is incorrect. So don't put out a wrong narrative is my only point. No, so have I said only the BJP is doing it? Have I not talked about what is it, happening it is in implied, Tamil Nadu? It is implied you have... No, you may have said it. I am going to say... Have I not said position. what is I'm happening in other states in West Bengal? If something you can wrong, look the at the graphics on our screen right now. If something is wrong, the government steps in. If something is correct, if we are not somebody. We, in fact, respect the judiciary. Today, the Maharashtra government entire dispute is before the Supreme Court. If we were not respecting the judiciary, we would not even go before the Supreme Court. So, you know, our government has always respected what the judiciary... For us, I think Constitution we're missing the point. is the holy book. And we, and I, we think, go by I, think, I think we're missing the point. The laws are in place. The laws are in place to book someone for defamation, to say that someone is, you know, inciting the public, has hurt communities. The laws are in place. But the question is, when and how are they wielded? And the fact is that there are more and more cases which are being reported every day. I've talked about three cases today. In Tamil Nadu, a BJP leader has been arrested. That's also one of the cases we're looking at. BJP leader has been arrested because he tweeted calling someone Ganja. That's the limit of intolerance. Ms. Sate, it's a commentary on the entire political establishment, including all parties, that these have become weapons. What does a common citizen do? Censor themselves. And what really do think, they have as I don't think there is any kind of avenue for some kind today. of a justice? If they're not a political functionary, what are they going to do? Should we should I don't we listen? Think there is any, can I can right. I speak? Can I just make my yes. point? I don't yes. think we are living in a uh, so like I that's exactly what I'm saying. I think the narrative which is being trying to build here is that there's some sort of gagging of the voice of the people. I don't think there is any gagging of the voice of people. Defamation ultimately is that if the party affected against whom a statement has been made, if he or she feels that that is a defamatory thing, then he, can, he or she can really move the relevant provisions that are available in law. My only point is when a person puts out something, so even as a political functionary, today even as a lawyer, I'm a practicing lawyer, I have to be aware about what I speak. I cannot speak something which is defamatory which will hurt public sentiment, which, which will incite something, uh, you know, which will cause any kind of violence or any kind of, uh, you know, hurt anybody's religious sentiments. I think we as responsible citizens have to be aware of all these things. So today, just tweeting out something and saying it's freedom of speech, it's freedom of expression, and, you know, I have a right to say anything I want. Yes, criticism has to be done. We are in a democracy. There are debates which happen in the parliament. You are not happy with a government policy. Every citizen has a right to voice their concerns, voice their freedom, uh, you know, voice their opinions. Okay. But to voice it in a fashion which is responsible, I think that is something which each citizen Who is going to decide? To okay, I've, I've been waiting to speak. I've been waiting to speak to Raj uh, Mungase. He's on the phone line with us now. We couldn't get a clear video. Raj ji, aapko hamari awaz aa rahi hai? Mr. Raj, can you hear me? Mr. Raj, can you hear me?
All right. We don't seem to be able to hear him at this point. We'll try and get him back. Now, the question over here is how do you define what is responsible or not? Karuna Nandi, is there any clarity as far as law is concerned? There are a number of Supreme Court judgments that read down these provisions. And so when the these various provisions that channel speech, channel public participation, um, also, we see, for example, the conviction rate in UAPA cases is not very high, and it has gone down from about 29% in 2019. Even in 2019, it was 29%. It's gone down to 21%. So this should be a matter of concern, because there are some laws in which the process is the punishment. In fact, all criminal laws, the process is the punishment, right? So it is the you know, the BJP is in power in many states. So it is very much the responsibility of the BJP, as well as the responsibility of other states, state governments, to ensure that if somebody is being detained or if somebody is, to whatever extent the state has the power over these processes, that they be limited. That FIRs not be, um, uh, that there be closure reports where the FIR is wrongly filed. That if it's not a cognizable offence, that the pre preliminary inquiries be done in a responsible manner. That prosecutors are advising police correctly so as not to just pick up somebody who's saying something that's kind of unpopular. So I don't think there's any question that the responsibility very much lies with, as I said earlier, regimes, the governments. And to the extent that the BJP has the power to get rid of criminal defamation. Why not get rid of it? Is it, time? Is it time to get rid of defamation or at least use it judiciously? That is really the question we need to be asking at this point. I don't think there's any doubt. A large number of countries have gotten rid of it to arrest someone and to send them to jail because they have offended, you know, the lowered somebody's reputation. Think about it. For two years, does this sound reasonable? Or would Ms. a civil case suffice? Ms. Sate, would you like to respond to that? Maybe there can be a bipartisan sort of discussion and support on this. Look, I think the BJP in that sense has been pretty pioneering in, you know, repealing or, or getting away with laws which have been archaic, which have been uh, laws from right, you know, laws which are from uh, which are today not re not relevant really. Uh, I don't have the list of all those laws uh, which uh, are there, but I think one, that was two, a just an example. Two or three. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Just examples, two or three. Of course, you can't be expected to remember a list, ma'am. But just two or three examples, do you remember? Well, there are quite a few. There are quite a few laws which we but have done two. away with. Like number I said, two. at this point of time, at this point of time, I, I will come back with those which two of the laws, if you would like to okay. know separately. But yes, we have taken measures to do away with all the archaic laws. In fact, if the criminal dis uh, defamation has to be done away with, if it has to be done away with, then of course it has to be a deliberative, uh, deliberative process. It cannot be a process that overnight, you know, a law can be repealed. It has to be seen whether that law, there are various laws in our country which are misused. It could be the Domestic Violence Act, which could be misused. It could be certain provisions in uh, fiscal statutes which are misused and or misused or I won't use the use misuse. It is, it's a double-edged sword rim. So, and the recourse there is you could move a writ court, you could ask the courts to, you know, uh, you know, declare it ultra wires to the constitution. So, there are various remedies available in the legal system itself, which will help citizens to really approach courts and say that, look, this is something, this law is really something which needs, uh, you know, it's, it's draconian. The provisions are draconian and that really need to be quashed. So, I think our legal system is robust. Our legal system, the judges, the judiciary is robust, and I think we should uh, really apply those principles and go ahead. And if required, if any tinkering of if or if any okay. law has to be uh, really repealed it's, or it's changes actually, have you know, to the be issue, made, the issue then... beyond the point, the issue beyond the point is the application of laws. No, that's and, not correct. And, 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 that's and unfortunately, we haven't we haven't addressed the way that they are being applied right now. These laws.
because Karuna Nandi have not come yesterday. They have been on our statute books for a very long time. Absolutely. But we are now seeing a flurry Correct. of cases. But the government has also been in power for a very long time now. So for how long can we hear that this was the fault of the previous government? Now this government, the central government has been in power for, let's see, 2014. So that is close to a decade. A whole 10 years. In 10 years then, with very robust majorities in parliament, why can it? Why is it not that we can't come up with, between us, two laws? I'm not just putting the onus on you, man. Two laws that are draconian that have been done away with. Whereas I can come up with five that have been strengthened. Right? So, <clears throat> I think I'm glad that we're on the same page that... Um, and of course, I hold no brief for any political party. But I am somebody who stands for free speech and fundamental rights. And I do feel that given the, you know, given the situation and given that there is some agreement in some quarters that mm. these laws are a real problem, why don't we take proactive action and get rid of them? Placing everything, I think, in the uh, doors of the judiciary is not possible because if there is a law that exists, then a constitutional challenge against the whole law is going to be rare, right? I mean, you know, because you're a lawyer, right? That a whole law getting set aside is very rare. Criminal defamation, okay. yes, 499 and 500 was placed before the Supreme Court. Oh, and the Supreme Court, Supreme Court said no in the judgment that I strongly disagree with. Right. But there's nothing stopping the government from saying that, look, we want to hear criticism. We want people to hear criticism. <laughs> of each other, where it crosses a line, there is a civil remedy. You know, there's nothing stopping any government, so really state or central, any political, central any political neta, state or central, from really being able to hear the voice of people. It's not necessary that everybody likes you. I'm going to end this here, but I want to thank all of you for joining us on the show. And as we discuss, people being...